Hey everyone, welcome to DevOps Journey. So in today's video, we're going to look at key things that you need to consider when migrating from an existing uh, pod network policies to uh, AWS supported security groups or pods. So AWS recently uh, discontinued support for AWS Calico Helm Chat, which is which was essentially managing uh, pod pod network policies for for the EKS clusters, and now they've recommended using. Uh, uh, security groups or pods. So when you're planning migration, there are a few things you need to consider. So one of the key things is uh, previously when you were deploying pods with pod network policies, you had no limitations on number of pod network policies you uh, were allowed to have. Essentially, those were virtual resources that didn't really matter how many you had. Um, but with the pod uh, security groups, you have limitations on number of security groups you can have based on the types and number of nodes you have as workers in your cluster. So for example, if you had a test namespace and you had 100 pods in those test namespace and you had a default network policy applied to that particular uh, namespace, then you need, you essentially have 100 virtual network policies applied to each pods, right? But in in the pod security uh, group space, if you have 100 pods, even if they're identical pods uh, associated with the deployment, you will need to have 100 different pod security groups allocated. So how it works is when you deploy a security group to a pod, um, AWS has provisioned a controller that automatically attaches a secondary ENI to, to the node that that the pod is as, as scheduled with and that ENI is of type trunk. So it's a trunk interface. Then it attaches a branch interface to that trunk and that's how that trunk gets, a, a branch interface gets attached to the pod. And once the security group gets attached to the, to the branch interface, it gets an IP address and that's the IP address of the pod and that's where the security group is also associated. So what that means is AWS also has limitation on number of trunk, uh, number of branch interfaces its trunk can have. So keep that in mind because uh, you have to shift from uh, previous thinking of, okay, we can apply to as many pods as possible and fit into the theoretical limit of the node. But now you have to think about the theoretical limit of the pod security uh, groups. Another, actually, another point that you need to remember is um, when uh, in the old setup, the network policies actually don't bypass the uh, node security groups. So if you have a node security group that's blocking public access, none of the pods will be able to access it. But now, because each pod gets a separate ENI, essentially called pod ENIs, those pods um, can bypass the EC2 security groups because they have a separate security group attached. Keep that in mind because that might become relevant when you have PCI compliant um, cluster and uh, suddenly you're no longer compliant because your pods are immediately able to access the outside network because they're no longer associated with, with the node security groups. Um, so thank you for watching. I'll have a detailed guide ready soon. So um, see you in the next video.